you are now standing in what we like to consider the center of the known universe, but otherwise it's 309 East Main Street, Carborough, North Carolina, otherwise known as Surplus SIDS. Here, Army Navy Surplus Store, Costume Shop Extraordinaire. And my name is Sid Keith. Uh, my given name is Barry, but I tell people this all the time. A long time ago when I started SID, Surplus SID sounded a lot better than Bargain Barry's. You go in, you look up, you look down, you look around. And if you stay an hour, you haven't seen it all. His store is like the beach at low tide. You know, you come in one day and you see a lot of stuff. You come back the next day, it's probably low tide. And there's more stuff. I think we've got, uh, we've got surplus literally from 30, 30 different nationalities worth of military surplus. We've got government surplus from probably half a dozen to a dozen different countries. We've got a U.S. government surplus. We've got stuff from the National Endowment for the Arts, where the costumes come from, theatrical surplus. Somebody will come in and says, I'm looking for a World War I type stretcher. And he's got it. Or he's got a mess kit from World War I, or a Hessian helmet. I've probably used this line 10 million times in all the 27 years we've been here, but surplus is like the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh life for everything on the planet. It's an, an entire plethora of things you can imagine. It is, uh, even it amazes me sometimes, and I think I've been jaded enough over the years from what I've done over my life to be uh, totally not uh, even affected by what's in this place. But it, you can't be. This place is just one of the most amazing places you'll ever walk into. Well, we, we lovingly call most of our furniture Frankenstein furniture. Yeah. And uh, when the pieces are left over that we don't have, can't do anything with or whatever, where it goes, we cobble it together into something useful again. And the leftover pieces end up being made into something. If you go back there and look, the Da Vinci wings that are hanging up, it's like one of Da Vinci's ornithopters. It becomes something like that. This started out life as the uh, arms, two arms to a sofa and a bunch of broken chair backs. And then it became, <laughs> put it together into that. He's got a knack for it. He knows what to put together. He knows how to make it. We always say if it's not in here, then it hasn't been made or we haven't made it. An old mentor of mine, Dr. William Bennett, he was a professor over at uh, Duke. He lived across the street and friends, was friends with Einstein. He <laughs> used to hang out with Einstein, no kidding. He and Einstein be sitting on the front porch on a spring evening in the rocking chairs going back and forth. He said, Einstein would tell him, he said, William, you always have to remember that sometimes imagination can be more important than knowledge. It has to be conceived before it can be done. So we've always lived by that motto down here. If this was a personality, the store was a personality, then it would be one of the characters and one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah. <laughs> Does business with, uh, when it comes to films, television shows. Uh, he did some, uh, he was a firearms uh, consultant with a Discovery. They've done some things like re, uh, redoing murders from other eras and he was a firearms master on that. Playmaker's repertory. He helped, uh, he built an electric chair for him for the play of Assassins and furnished all the weapons with the blanks in it for the play. He's, uh, he's got a lot of knowledge in there. And we're in uh, the Sundance, I think there's a book, uh, a listing of, of, uh, of friendly suppliers. Sundance, like the, the Sundance Film Festival. Wow. Of course, my wife will not watch a movie with me now because I'll, you know, I'll be sitting there and I'll start poking her. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of my hats, or that's one of his, or something, something that we sent. He's a good businessman, and being in business for into our 28th year, I mean, that's pretty good. Right. That's not bad at all. He's withstood uh, uh, the ravages of time, but uh, but Sid's got there's and not many people know this. There there is something about him that. As, as, as gruff on the outside as he is, he has tried to help a lot of people around here. Uh, he took, he took a, a kid over the last few years who had been in jail and offered him a job and helped him, gave him a place to stay. He's taken people off the streets and, you know, he'll, he'll buy their cans from him. They pick up cans. He's, he does things for people in the wintertime. Somebody comes in and says, I got two bucks. I need some gloves. 
but he's got a, a good heart. Uh, I mean, he likes to call himself the Emperor Carborough, but uh, not a whole lot of people really know what he does. When people ask me sometimes, they said, why do you do that? And I said, well, it's a, I can tell you this, it's a lonely impulse of delight, like William Butler Yeats said, why do I do it? <laughs>